That is Jake the Garden Snake. That is Ian of Big Rock Moto and our buddy Jeff. We're gonna take these Aprilia Touaregs out on an extended test ride. What's your insurance like? It's uncomfortably awkward. So we're in an actual OHV park. We lost Ian. It's like we're hitting whoops on this thing. Well, this was not what I had in mind. Jake's here. The problem here is not the motorcycle, it's the rider. There's not really anything I don't like about it. It's Ian's fault. It's like they had a baby. Ian rode it for a day and he wants to buy one. Hello friends, welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road. This is Get On ADV Fest. That is Jake the Garden Snake. That is Ian of Big Rock Moto and our buddy Jeff from ADV Agenda. And we're going to take these Aprilia Touaregs out on an extended test ride. Michael and the gang at Aprilia have been nice enough to let us take these out unguided. And uh, so we're going to get a long test ride first impressions video for you. So I already made the test ride video, which I will link for you. But this is going to be a little bit more in depth, a little bit more time with the bike. And I'm pretty stoked about it, so let's get out there and make it happen. I'm the dork in the road, and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. A few things to know. Basically, it's just on the stock tires. So the Pirelli, the Scorpion Pirelli Rally, the STR, they're going to be okay in the sand, but not amazing. We rode on them yesterday, and they were fine. Same stock tires that come on the Tenere and the, uh, on the Norden, so it's going to be a great apples-to-apples-to-apples -to -apples -to -apples comparison, considering I spent a bunch of time on those recently. Yeah, let's not break oh, let's these. Break let's not do that. They only have six. Look at this, look at this, <laughs> this is half of their fleet right now. All right, so Ian's going to take the lead. Jake's behind me. Jeff's bringing up the rear. No? What's your insurance like? It's okay, as long as yours covers your <laughs> Yeah, okay. yeah. I'm gonna head like so I'm in off-road mode right now. Oh, yeah. See how much I get with the traction control on as it is. Much. All right, we're not on a guided tour this time. Ian's our guide. Oh, yikes. No good. No good. 0% good. This thing is light, dude. It just, it is really fun. I just don't feel like I'm fighting it. I just don't. Let's go. It is funny, uh, you know, you wonder if people you meet on YouTube are the same in real life and true to form, like, Ian is in there, like, looking at every setting, tweaking it, he stopped at the stoplight, plays with the settings a little more, and he is a very meticulous, very in-depth guy, right, in his videos, that's sort of his trademark, uh, and I just hopped on and I'm like, oh, off-road mode's probably fine, I'll figure it out, and Jake's just like, I wonder if I can break this thing, he's just sitting there doing burnouts and just, you know. Uh, so these guys, you know, I've had the privilege of spending some time with them over the last couple of days and they're they are exactly who you see on camera, dude. There's no room for fakery. YouTube is like such, it's, it's so much work that it, it, maintaining a persona at the same time, it's got to be tough. I don't know how those fake super people do it, but everyone I've met in, in motorcycle influencer quote unquote world has been a super genuine person. So it's pretty awesome. I have not yet met an I'm sure they exist. Anyway, it's going to be too windy for me to talk, so I'll talk when we get into a little bit slower situation. Worth pointing out that we're on a closed course in Mexico, obviously, like all our test rides. Boy, it's butter smooth, I'll tell you that. There's Ian. Oh, interesting. OHV area. All I want for a highway on this is a little bit taller windscreen and maybe a different seat. But maybe I mean, seat it's slightly taller. Is this adjustable? I don't think. It doesn't look like it. It was slightly taller because I did, like, I lowered my head down just slightly. I was like, yep, yeah, there's, there it is. I'm just barely in the bus thing. So it's better than the one on the Norden and the one on the Tenere in stock form. I will 
say that. I'm gonna video Ian doing his Ian thing. High five, high five, high five. I'm just trying to get a high five. I'm just trying to get a high five. What's up, high five? What's up, high five? Oh, nice. Well, I thought you'd like ride by and try to break my wrist, so. Nice of you to stop. Literally being a dork in the road right now. Yeah, li that's what I do. It's not just a clever name. It's not even a clever that name. uncomfortably awkward. <laughs> they thought I was trying to get them to stop. I know. So we're in an actual OHV park. I'm not going up that It's overrated. What the f Right into the deep ass sand. Well, this was not what I had in mind, so you guys can watch me crash or whatever. But I guess it's a good testament to how this bike is and how easy it is to ride. I do not like sand, particularly on big bikes, you know that. And Ian immediately is like, hey, how much sand can we find? A lot, dude. I will say, it's handling it admirably. Like, I purposefully didn't bring my Norton or my Tenere because they have no crash protection and are on these tires. And now here I am doing it on a bike with no crash protection in these tires. <sighs> Where is he going? Yeah, this is, uh, I'm not this good. We lost Ian and Jeff. Cool. I mean, the suspension is bitching. Like, it's getting it done. It's impressive. It, it's not a problem. I mean, the, the limit here is the rider in many ways. Like we're hitting whoops on this thing. Like, damn dude, crazy. We're definitely getting a test in. Sorry, Aprilia. I didn't know Ian was gonna lead us out into the freaking middle of nowhere. Huh. That way, maybe? Ooh, there's a sandy wash. We wanna go that way. Yeah. That's a little tall for me. I'm not, oh sh Oh sh Oh sh Jake's here. Yeah, we're in a river wash right here. All right. Hey, it's a little sandy over here. Yeah, this is a, definitely a stream bed. Let's get a thumbs up. At least you dropped it in the sand. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine-ish. This is good content though. So, yeah, supposedly these are really light. So yeah. Let's find out. Oh, hey, the exhaust is hot. The current thing was a little wonky, but I well, wasn't going to notice that. You unscrew that and take that. No. Yeah, no, it's fine. You ever have, my camera took the worst of it. Thank God for the plastic hand guards. Well, see, and I was worried this video was going to be boring. So I'm just going to waddle out. You know, call me what you will, that's fine. Is this even the road we were on? I literally don't even know. I don't think it is. I think it's the wrong road. We're going the wrong way. Yeah, we are on the wrong road. We gotta go that way. Nope, nope, nope. <sighs> They're gonna be super stoked. This is all Ian's fault. I just want to point out this is Ian's fault. Go grab it. All right, let me grab. At least we've confirmed I still hate sand. Good times. Good times. This is our road. This is our road. Yeah, yeah. There's that first wash. Well, I mean, it's fun. It's a very capable bike. Again, the problem here is not the motorcycle. It's the rider. 
turning the traction control all the way off and this stuff really helps. It's just clutch control, try to keep the wheel from spinning, but keep it moving. Gotta go forward. Stay on top of the sandy stuff. Don't get too much speed in the whoops. Yep, pretty funny. You always end up doing the thing you don't want to do. So here I am on the Scorpion Rallies, riding a brand new bike that isn't mine. In the sand, which was not what I was working for today. Oh, oh, that was close. Saved it with a little power. I do not want to drop this again. Rocky stuff is my friend. Sandy stuff I hate. Rock's good, sand bad. I see the road. Pretty excited for the road. There's Ian. Bro, we lost you. I maybe had a little oopsie. Jake and I both did. Good job, dude. Big bikes are dumb. Yeah. <laughs> Were you just saying you wanted one? Oops. Well, I mean, if it can't take a fall, it's not a good bike. Worst case, I buy a sticker. But the bike feels extremely capable to me. Yeah, no, I... I not ride that on my GS at all. I kept saying, it's not the bike, it's the rider is a problem right now. I'm just not giving it enough gas to get through the sand smoothly. Fire. Yeah. This is insane, these hill climbs. It is beautiful out here, though. Look at this. Unbelievable. Just gorgeous country. Beautiful! Yeah, we better go. We only got half an hour. <laughs> Whoa! Jake's doing wheelies! And I'm all the way back here! Damn it. At least I got it on camera. It's fun in the twisties. I mean, this is a fun bike to ride. You gotta love it all around, honestly. It's hard to give it bad marks. There's not really anything I don't like about it, except the controls are a little fiddly to get to. But that's just a symptom of there being so many options, which is not in itself, in and of itself a bad thing. And probably once I learned the system, and really you just go in and set the modes to what you like, and it's fine, but it's not very user-friendly at the beginning. You really need some time to play with all the settings just because there's so much. So that is a downside, and then again, it's just the question marks about reliability and availability. And it's hard to say, it was a brand new bike, first gen like this. Ooh. Side saddle in it. <laughs> it transitions well in twisties. It is a nimble bike for being so tall with the 21. That is one thing I like about these Pirelli tires. If I only ever went on gravel and the road, they'd be great. Unfortunately, we have this mud stuff in the PMW that I run into a lot. Well, that's about going to do it for this extended test ride video with Jake and Ian and Jeff. I want to thank those guys for coming out and riding with me. I'll link all these guys' channels, obviously, for you in the description. Thank you to Aprilia for letting us do this extended test ride and to Michael specifically. Okay, I have three things to tell you. One, it's Ian's fault. Two, this video is going to get a lot of views. And three, I may have dropped it. In the sand. So, you know, if you need me to buy a sticker, I will. You went from my favorite person to second favorite person, now you're down to third favorite. Oh, person. dude. Well, I'm going to see by how low I can get dude, before the weekend is, is over. Plummeting right dude. Now. So, we're talking to two different cameras today, so uh, it's okay. Sorry, we're going to look at two different angles, but uh, Ben and I are both filming a little bit of a, sort of an outro, I guess, for the, our rides on the Tuareg. So, thanks, Ben, for joining me and kind of sharing some of your thoughts on the bikes. We, we got to ride these bikes for 
uh, two days, two, yeah. different, two yeah. different times. We and, were very lucky. Uh, Aprilia was nice enough to, to let us have the bikes yesterday for a few hours by ourselves to really go rip them around. Nice enough or foolish enough. Yeah, exactly. Maybe you can start. Like, uh, you just bought the T7, you bought a Norden. Like, what are your thoughts on the Aprilia compared to the other mid-sized bikes? Yeah, so I, for, it's really great of Aprilia to let us take those out. And I know I don't know about you, but I get a ton of questions about I do. that 660. And I'm just like, guys, I've never even seen one in person, so it's hard for me to answer it. So, so cool of them to let us do that and take them out um, it's interesting because you know I've only had my t7 and my Norton for like a week but it really to me it fits in between the two it's like they had a baby it's got like all the fancy electronics and stuff that the Norton has but it's the, it's narrow and nimble feeling like like the Tenere it's like a, a Tenere that is well equipped and the price is right in the middle too so it's almost like they did that on purpose um, but it was very fun to ride yeah, yeah, I, I agree with all that. Uh, for me, you know, all the complaints that I had about the T7, which people get on my case for, but I felt that the T7 was a little top heavy maybe. It's, uh, the fuel tank is a little too small. It doesn't have cruise control or traction control. Um, the suspension is soft on the Tenere, but not on this. So the, the Touareg, for me, I felt that it checked all those boxes off. And so it's kind of, it might be my like unicorn mid-size bike because it has the electronics and, and features that I want, the good componentry with suspension, great brakes. It feels really narrow and it feels like something I want to ride off-road a lot. And uh, it fixes everything I didn't like about the T7. And it feels a lot smaller than my, than my Norden. And to be honest, it feels like a higher quality built machine than my Norden does. And I'm just being honest about that. I could be way off, but that's just how it feels to me. Uh, of course, I could be impacted by the fact that my Norden's currently broken right, right. with a broken shock. But uh, mine isn't. And I agree yeah. with what you're saying. The fit and Do finish you? pieces, and yeah. I don't know, just like the turn signal feels loose. It's just little things yeah. like that on the Norden that makes me think, how much did I pay for this? And everything seems more tight and like well built, solid. Really, is the word I like to use a lot on the Turig. And I know it's a little lighter than the Tenere, but not a lot. But it's it feels very nimble, very light, and without that top heaviness that you're talking about with the Tenere. Yeah. Um, even in and we got into stuff that I would not have gone into on purpose mm -hmm. um and aside from one little oopsie uh it handled it admirably the problem was was between you know the handlebars and the seat on the the bike the bike was more than capable of handling anything we threw at it out here how about uh sort of comfort and fit and ergonomics and everything like how did that all that feel for you i really like the bar position um i don't it's a bike that i don't feel like i need risers on i yeah. kind of want them on the norden i feel like the tenere's bars are about the right height it's pretty comfortable we did a, a little bit on the highway that was good <laughs> standing's good um the seat at first i thought was very comfortable and then after a while it was a little stiffer but it probably has to break in i i think the seat is not as good as like the norden is i think it's yeah. more similar to like a ktm 790 seat but it it, it felt okay for yeah a couple hours but i don't think it's an all-day saddle so yeah. it's a little narrow yeah it helps Which the bike feel narrow yeah. and you it's not too tall i think it's around a 34 34 and a half inch seat height maybe i mean everything on that bike felt dialed in to me I, people are concerned about reliability parts availability dealership network and all that stuff and those are valid those are valid uh, concerns i think and i don't know the answers to those things um, but for for me like i have a, a few aprilia dealerships within a couple hours of me so it's not really a problem for me personally is it a bike I would want to take on a round the world trip? No, I would take a Japanese bike. Uh, but right. for the kind of riding I do, like at events like this and BDR type riding, backcountry discovery routes, I, I think that bike is dialed for that. Yeah. The suspension, I wouldn't need to do anything to the suspension. It's not a GS, right? But it's not supposed to be. It's a bike yeah. that can handle the technical rougher terrain while also carrying your gear. Um, which is, and it's a good mid-size, you know, it's not too heavy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what I personally look for in an ADV bike. So I was really impressed with it. The the engine, I love that engine. Oh yeah. my God, the intake sound. When you're really on the throttle, it just begs you to keep going and going because the intake honk is so loud. Mm -hmm. It just gets in your brain. It's, they really engineered the sound of it. That engine is super smooth. There's no vibration coming through the yeah, bike at all. Yeah, you're right. Even at Redline, there's like no vibration. That is a great engine. And it makes five or 10 more horsepower than the T7 too. Interesting. Um, um, yeah, even though it's even though it's a similar size engine. Well, and it's one of those bikes where you know you start going and you look down and you're like, oh, I'm going 85, 90 miles we, an hour. We were we were not going slow no. on these on these test rides. Let's put it that way. No, it's pretty wide open out and, here. And yeah, it's wide open desert and and man, I got on some of these these single track ridges, which was amazing. I was like, way in over my head, but the bike was like, yeah, bring it on. Yep. Yep. You know, so I I don't know. Um, probably I'm trying to perhaps buy one for reviewing on the channel, so. That's the best endorsement. I mean, Ian rode it for a day and he wants to buy one and he's got a Norton sitting at home. 
you know i mean what happened is the first ride on it i got i was super excited but you're always excited for your first ride on any bike that's uh -huh. the way life is but then when i rode it the second day and i still wanted to buy one i'm not gonna buy one right away because i just bought you two just other bought bikes, two bikes. But, <laughs> but it was really great to get some seat time and extended seat time because people are always ask me to compare it to this guy's tent's blown away <laughs> Not even windy now. <laughs> I know. He just got unlucky. Yeah. yeah, we've had some wind in the desert. Let's yeah. put it that just way. Just a little bit. You said the I'm W tired. word. It's okay though, because we're leaving. Yeah. Um, but people always want to know, you know, how it compares. And I have the other two at home, and at least now I have more than a 15-minute test ride on this one to really talk about it. I struggled to find things that I didn't like about it, um, other than, like you said, availability, reliability. We just don't know. Those are question marks. But and even people have concerns about, you know, the engine's a little smaller. But we, like I said, we're doing 80, 85, no problems. You could ride all day on the freeway on that thing. You don't even need a bigger engine. No, the engine's perfect and it has more power than a T7 and it's just as smooth as a T7. Mm -hmm. I say the low end power is really smooth. You can you can idle it down in second gear to walking speed and it, it yeah. doesn't it doesn't want to seem to want to stall or anything. No, not at all. So yeah. I think they really did their homework, you know. There's some there's some details on the bike that I want to research more like that skid plate doesn't look you know, that factory skid plate's not going to work and Par there's the a course. few things like that and I worry about aftermarket availability at this point because yeah. the bike is so new. That's, a, good That's point. a problem with being an early adopter. There's like, there's no, there's nothing for it. Yep. Yeah. You, you know, and it's not going to be widely adopted like the Norden is or other bikes. So it's going to be a little scarce for that, but that's part of why I think I should buy it to really see how that is. I've never had an Aprilia. Yeah. So check that I've always list. wanted to, I've always wanted to, you know, so. So if you had to rate it out of 10, what would you give it? Like a nine? I mean, I don't know. I want to give it a ten, but the thing is, there's just not much competition yet yeah. because there's these mid-size adventure bikes. Are, there's just not that many of them. Um, everybody's trying to buy T7s and they're not available, and people are paying way over sticker for them. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, like the p prices people are paying for Tenere 700s is the same price as the, the Touareg is. Cheaper in some cases. You know, the Touareg is that's eleven like nine 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 yeah, for the base color, and man, I, that's a deal. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot of motorcycle for that price. And I, and I think it definitely belongs in the conversation, obviously, with those other two bikes and the, and the mid-sized bikes that companies are finally starting to come out with. So if you, if you hadn't heard of it or you're sleeping on it or, or you're not sure because it's a brand that, you know, they don't really make adventure bikes, if you can get a chance to test ride one, I would encourage you to do it. It's an impressive machine. It was really fun. Yeah, go ride one and stay tuned. To, stay tuned to both our channels, obviously, for future information on this bike. And I'll, I'll keep you guys updated on, uh, on how this goes in, in terms of if I'm getting one. And yeah. maybe by the time this video goes out, I may already have one. Yeah, dude. So who knows? But uh, it's always an adventure. Thanks to our friend Jeff, who's holding the camera for us. His channel is ADV Agenda. We'll, we'll I'll link I'll link it down below in this video. But thank you, Jeff, for helping us out this weekend. Yeah, Jeff's uh, Jeff's the camera guy. So ADV yeah. Agenda. I will link that for you. Go check out his channel. Yeah. Follow him on the gram. I just want to say thanks to Ian for being here and having this conversation with me. He's all packed up and trying to get out of here. I'm like, dude, let's film a video. Um, <laughs> and uh, so it's been a great weekend, great time. Big thanks to Revzilla, Aprilia, and everybody. And thanks for being here, man. And yeah. as always, you guys, if you have questions, leave them in the comments. But for now and as always, please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I'll thank you.